So this is the camera that I use when I'm shooting conferences, lectures and seminars. And it's a great camera for doing that. But why don't I use my DSLR or even a mirrorless camera? Well, DSLR and mirrorless cameras do produce great images. They're good in low light. But one of the problems is, is battery life on them. This has superb battery life and I can shoot for a good chunk of the day. I can also plug mains into this as well, so I'm not dependent on using the batteries on them. And that can be a bit trickier with a DSLR or mirrorless camera, and you might have to get adapters even if they are available to make them work. So that's one downside to it. The other downside to a DSLR or mirrorless camera is they have a limitation of 30 minutes, and that's something that's actually built into the camera. So you can't shoot over 29 minutes and 59 seconds. Unless, of course, you're going to start doing things like changing the firmware by loading up something that isn't authorised, say, by the manufacturer. And I wouldn't really recommend doing it. I know people that have, and that sort of takes away that limitation, but sometimes they run into other issues as well. So that's another good reason for not using it. The other thing is that you have with a camera like this is you've got two audio inputs over here. On a DSLR or mirrorless, you've only got one. And you can see here, there are these sort of professional XLR inputs as well. So you could get a mixer and attach that to the DSLR. When I say DSLR, I mean mirrorless as well. However, then you're plugging in and you've got more things attached to it and you've got to get power for that as well. If you had more than two, you could do the same here as well. But I do find that two inputs does work a lot better and so I put a shotgun mic on here and I also have a feed from the AV sometimes or maybe I've got a wireless mic on the presenters as well. So that's a good reason for it. Now the other advantage of a camcorder like this over not just the DSLR and mirrorless cameras but other cheaper camcorders is at the top here I can easily adjust the audio over here. Now that's quite significant because when you start recording, you might do a sound test, but when the presenter actually then starts, you might find that they speak louder or softer and you've quickly got to adjust these dials at the top here to sort of fix that in a hurry. So that's a good thing to have here too. So very handy for that. The other thing is that I have on a camera like this, which you don't really get on the SLRs and the mirrorless cameras, is an electronic zoom rocker here so you can gently zoom in and out. When you try and do it on an SLR, you're, you have to turn very consistently and that can be difficult. They can also lose focus as well, unlike a camera like this. If I set the focus on this, if I zoom in and out, it doesn't change the focus. SLRs and mirrorless cameras can actually run into that problem. This is a sort of specially calibrated lens. So that's another thing. Now, the, as I said, the batteries on here do give me significant battery life, and that's really important when you're shooting things like conferences. I also find that the other limitation is that the uh, video that's being recorded takes up a lot of space on the SLR. It seems to be recording it in a much less compressed format, so my memory cards don't last as long. On a camera like this, the memory cards do last a long time. They're actually in here on this particular model. I actually have two slots here. So I've got two options and they, they do take uh, compact flash cards. So the advantage of this is one, if it runs out of space on one, it will automatically shift over to the other without any break in recording, which is great. The other thing I can do as well, if it's really important, I can actually put two cards in here and record on both. So if you're worried about it failing for any particular reason, you've got a backup on the other one, and I think that's something that's really good. In fact, on this model, there's also the option to put an SD card at the back here that records an MP4 file. This records something at a higher bit rate so you get better quality, but the MP4 file, believe me, is still very good. The other useful thing here, it's quick and easy to white balance on it, so when you need to set up very quickly, that's also handy. With a DSLR, as I said, you can actually add in the mixer as well. But when you do that and you're in a hurry setting up and quite often with lectures, you haven't got much time between one and the other because there's one lecture after another. So you only might get five minutes or so. Um, 
you have to connect everything up, put the mixer on, and there's a lot more sort of faffing around. So this is great for doing that kind of thing as well. So as I said, you've got the white balance is quick and easy to do. And the other thing that it does have is a nice sort of full size HDMI out on here. Now, why might that be useful? Well, I could connect it to a monitor that sits on the top of the camera here. And if you're working for a long time, that can certainly take the strain off of your eyes as well. Now you can do that on the DSLRs and mirrorlesses too, but it just has a bigger cable here so you can actually connect it up to something at more of a distance. It does seem to make a bit more of a difference. So overall, this is a great sort of camera to use. This is actually a Canon XF200. There are other models, other brands, but things to look out for are the inputs here. So you've got like two inputs. You've got a rocker here that gives you a nice gentle zoom. You've got a flip out screen, which they all seem to have these days and a viewfinder as well. Check on the battery life. I did actually get an additional battery. This is a much bigger battery of high capacity here so that I've got, I can shoot for hours on this kind of thing. So at the moment, this is fully charged. Actually, no, it's not fully charged, but if it was, I would get several hours on this. So this is a great option if that's the sort of thing you've got to shoot. If you do go and get a cheaper one, the things to think about is one, cheaper and smaller. One, they may not have two audio inputs and it'll be similar as you've got on something like the SLRs and mirrorless cameras. The other thing is it may not have two slots as well. And you also would have to go more into the menus to get to things in a hurry, such as changing the volume, setting the white balance. So you can see here a lot of things like increasing the gain, which increases the sensitivity. So if you're used to thinking in terms of SLRs, that's like increasing your ISO, and I can quickly do that. You're shooting a lecture or conference, someone turns down the lights and suddenly it's a bit too dark. You can just quickly flip that up so that's actually turning it all the way up very, very quickly. The problem with smaller, cheaper cameras is you do have to go into the settings a lot to fiddle with things. If you're shooting something live, you don't have time to do that. And even if you're not, I do use this for doing other sorts of video as well. It's just very quick and simple to set up. So that's a good reason for having a camera like this. So hopefully that helps you decide on what camera you might need to get if you are going to have to shoot things like lectures, seminars and conferences.